Hey guys, Sandy Missouri. Today we are going to learn how to make these really cool um, hydro dip barrettes. Let's see. See that they are, um, they're dyed, they're tie dyed and then, um, and then hydro dipped in a nail polish and it makes a really, really cool effect. So anyways, stay tuned and we're gonna learn how to do this. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take these flowers and I'm using the flowers from Teeks. Um, they, come with the, uh, they come with the shoes. So I go into groups and I offer to buy people's Teeks flowers. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we want to um, tie dye it. And that's just going to give it a nice interesting surface and you'll see that when we wash the dye it doesn't it it's not going to like completely soak through so for this one i think i'm going to do purple and especially you know if it's got like for this one we want the we want to color the the center bits here especially and the edges is what i really want to capture the dye and then and then you'll see i mean this is a multi-part process so um so we will uh, we will take it in stages, but for this part we're just we're just you know putting the dye and we really want to get it on those edges more than more than in the center. It's probably going to wash out of the center, but it tends to stay on the edges. So you see, we took this coral flower, salmon color flower, and we're turning it purple right now. Okay, so that's that's it for the tie dye. You can really only do one color at a time. Um, if you do more than one color, they mix together. And so then we're just going to set it out to dry. And I do let it dry overnight. You can use different kinds of silk flowers. Um, so this is the Teeks flower that I prefer to use. This is what I mostly wear for myself. And let me just go set this one down to dry. And then I'll put a different kind of flower in there. Okay, so you see that there's still some dye in there. And so I want to try to soak up as much of that as I can. So... Here I have, um, I have some other flowers that I got off of, um, off of uh, Etsy. And, uh, oh, this one should be pretty. This one's kind of a, a pink and, uh, see, pink and white. So I'm going to put that in there. This one doesn't have the little things. Um, and so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to soak up the, the dye that's already in there. Right, just kind of try to get it everywhere. And you gotta experiment a little bit because different silk flowers are gonna react differently. Now later we will cover up the jewel, but the dye won't, won't harm the jewel. That will just wa wash right off. So I'm not worried about that. So you see right now it's all purple, um, but when we wash it, it'll, it, you know, the purple won't stick everywhere. So you'll see. So, um, so basically that's how we start, right? We just start by tie dye. The, the brand that I'm liking best right now is, uh, is this one that I get at Michael's. Um, it's art mines is the brand. It comes already wet. I, I prefer the ones that are liquid to the ones that are powder. They just seem to, they just seem to do better on the silk flowers. I don't know why. One more, you see right, you see right now I'm in a purple, I'm in a purple phase. So, and we'll just use up the rest of this purple. Um, I'm not successful with mat, with gloves. Uh, so my hands get dirty, but it washes out eventually. So, but if you don't like dirty hands, then you might want to do better with gloves than I do. Um, so I'm gonna kind of put it in there and try to try to get the purple on, especially the those little end bits there. That's where I want it the most. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna give us a little bit more depth and a little bit more interesting color when we go, okay, I'm gonna use a lilac one to finish it off here. When we, uh, you know, when, when we go to the next step of using the uh, hydro dip with the nail polish, this will just kind of give it a more interesting base. And it will just look a little bit better, um, which I'll show you. And I'll, I'm also going to show you a couple of different ways that you can dye it, that you can dip it for different effects. 
okay so there we go that's that's the uh, tie-dyeing if you've done tie-dyeing before um, it's you know just the same thing that you've done before there you go see that's the flower with the dye and then I'll come back and show you when I wash the dye out what it looks like So there's that peach guy, and normally the color that you get is going to be more like the color on the back, where it kind of stains the tips, but then you have a lot of the original color, um, but <laughs> it happens to be like 100 degrees here today, and all night it was 100 degrees, which is very unusual for San Diego. So it was baking basically in the color. And so the color like really stayed more than normal. Like again, normally it's kind of more like, more like here, right? Where the color is gonna stain the edges, but then you're gonna have more of your original color in it. But, um, but just because of this extreme heat, it's, uh, it's, it's like baking in. So, so that's something that's kind of interesting. If you really, uh, you know, put it into a hot environment, it will hold the color even more. Um, and not, see, this is that gray one, right? So usually this is what we would expect, not this deep color. Okay, so here we are, and this is the one that we did, the first one that we did, that was the peach or the salmon color and you see how it it kind of came out like inside whoops <laughs> it's hard to do it one-handed inside you can see that it's a little bit um that it, you know it's kind of like faded and then goes into the color um on the outside the color really stuck so here's that other one that we did that the color really didn't stick and that's how it comes out more often which is why i was so surprised when the color stuck the way it did because it doesn't usually do that um but now we know if you're going to leave it for 24 hours in high humidity and high heat and, um, you know, I guess it's essentially like baking it all overnight in an oven. I've never had it come out this dark before. It always, it, it, it's usually closer to this or more like, more like the inside here where you've got the color, but then you've also got the original color. So anyways, but that's not going to, I mean, it, it's still going to come out a really cool effect because we still have to, um, we're still going to do the dipping with the nail polish and it, you know, the whole thing will be really neat. So you'll see, um, I just have to go prepare the, the water and try to set up the camera and, um, and then you will see how to dip these you see here we've got our water and I've got nail polish I'm just gonna let the I'm gonna let the water sit for one second and what we're gonna do is I think I'm gonna use these pink tones so this is it's just nail polish any kind of nail polish um, honestly I, I just went to the drugstore and I bought the cheapest so you don't need expensive nail polish for it to work. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do, here is that flower that we did with the peach, okay? And so first, I like to put down like a little bit of glitter just cause I like sparkle. So essentially what you wanna do is you wanna get the brush good and wet and then you're just kind of flinging it in there, right? And the smaller your movements, the less mess you're gonna make on everything else around but you really do want like you don't want it to go to the bottom you want it to kind of to kind of be on the top so I'm trying to keep in range of the camera but you might want to go up higher and do like kind of larger flicks okay I know this one's kind of hard to see because it's not a color all right so now let's start putting in some color so you really want like you really want like a lot on the on the um, brush Right? And then you're just kind of like flinging it in there. You see how it kind of just sits on the surface and makes these cool designs? All right, I like this color. 
Oops. <laughs> and you don't want to do that. You don't want to pour it directly from the bottle because then you see it's just all going to go down to the bottom. And so the more that you like layer in kind of different different shades, and of course this one I can't open, um, the more that you layer in different shades, the cooler it will look. See? Now, there's two ways that you can do it. Oh, and I forgot a really important step. My bad. Um, right. Let me layer this. Now, you do need to worry about time because you got to get it all done before the before it totally dries while it's still liquid. So you don't want it to form too solid of a film. Um, so you can see some of these nail polishes are starting to run out. Um, so here's that important step is we, oy, we want to, um, is that you don't want to forget if you're using a flower that has a jewel in it, you do want to cover the jewel because if you don't cover the jewel, then the jewel will get the nail polish on it. Okay. And you don't want the, the painter's tape to cover too much of the, of the flower, just the jewel itself. Now we got that covered. That's, that's pretty important. All right, so continuing to layer our paint, just throw a couple more in. I want some more of that lighter pink um, because that kind of goes with the coral. I would use a coral or salmon color, but I just don't have one right now. So we'll use what we got. And maybe just for fun, just a little bit of sparkles, a little bit of holographic sparkles. So you see this is not an unmessy activity. <laughs> Let's see, maybe just a little bit of the sparkle too. Okay, so now there's two ways that you can do it. You can either go straight down and then it's gonna get all over this part here or you can kind of just do the edges. So we're gonna just do the edges because I think that will show the magic of this the most. So, and this is kind of awkward that I'm doing it backwards, but you see when we put it in and we just start to roll it, it picks up the film of the nail polish you see? And it coats the edges. And it's hard to, I'm probably gonna have to put in a little bit more to do cleanup just because I'm doing it backwards. But you see what a cool effect that it gets, right? And like, I mean, okay, so you can't really control it too much, right? So maybe, hey. <laughs> maybe I want a little bit more here. So I might just put a little bit more layer, just a little bit more just to kind of pick up that one piece. And then I'll do the next flower that I'll just dip it in face down and, and you'll see what that looks like. Okay, and then the other thing about having it taped off is that then you kind of have a place to grab. So you see how it just kind of picks up the color and it just sticks there? Like, how cool is that, right? So much fun, and it gives such a cool effect. And here's the thing, I'm doing it for flowers that I make barrettes out of, but I mean, you could do it for anything, right? I mean, you could do it, you could do it for cups, you could do it for centerpieces, or, or anything. It's just, a, even shoes you can do it on. It's just a, a really cool technique that makes a really interesting look. So, okay, let me put this one down here and then let's try this one that I got off of, um, off of Etsy. And let me cover the jewel on this. And you see your hands will get some nail polish on it. You could use gloves. For me, the gloves just kind of get in my way. So, I mean, nail polish remover will take it off. All right, so let me just cover this jewel real quick. You want to try to avoid hitting the water like I just did. Okay. 
so then you're gonna take your flower and I'm just kind of grabbing a couple like a little bit of it from the back to hold on to and you're just going to put it straight down and then let it sink push it in and it will gather all the stuff around it I don't know why our lighting just changed but see look how cool that effect is right and then and then we'll, we have the little needle nose pliers here so that we can, uh, I don't, I don't want to undo it too much with my fingers, but oops. Yeah, this is what you, why you want to use painter's tape and not duct tape. So this particular flower is kind of falling apart. So you might want to double check your, the little brad connections before you do it. That's why I like using these teaks flowers. They're, um, they're just better made and so when I take this off you see it won't give me nearly as many problems it just kind of comes off so and then you're gonna let it dry I usually will just let it sit and dry for about 24 hours um, try to lay it out flat if it's falling apart and then once it's dry then I can put it all back together again um, you know and glue the layers back together so I'll just be really careful moving this around you do want to kind of make sure that like your little petals aren't sticking together too much but you can also kind of pull them apart once it's dry if they are so let me just make sure that both of them are in frame And then later we can go and we can add extra glitter on the edges or, you know, refine it however it needs. You know, if we say, oh, you know, it really needs a little bit more right here or whatever. But I think, I think like this, I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, yeah, so uh, now it needs to dry. Next stop in a few hours. See ya. So, for the um, barrette, you're going to take alligator clips, and I like the long ones, but you can use the shorter ones as well, um, and you want to take a hot glue gun, and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory, make a strip of hot glue, and put the alligator clip down into it, and then let it dry. Um, now, something about the hot glue, not all hot glues are created equally. Some of them, when it gets cold, will peel right off of the metal from the alligator clip. So you do want a hot glue and not a cool glue. Um, it will just stick better. So that's it. And then there's your barrette. So there you go. Those are all the steps to make these super cool, beautiful painted barrettes. You see, I have one in my hair. And like we said, you can either dip them and kind of go around and just get the edges, or like the one in my hair, you can put the whole thing in and cover the whole surface. So there you go. There's the whole multi-step process, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right, until next time, bye guys. Oh, make sure to like the video. Uh, make sure to comment on the video, and of course, subscribe to the channel. See ya!